And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I'm going to be creating this fabulous sea lion. Now this was an image taken from the Galapagos Islands. So this is a Galapagos sea lion. The reason I'm doing this is because on the 3rd of March 2023, it's International World Wildlife Day and that highlights endangered flora and fauna and animal um, and these are unfortunately endangered so that is my subject for today and I'm going to be using willow charcoal so this is beautifully this is just a small piece um, organic drawing material probably one of the earliest drawing materials people used um, and I just like to discover and find out its possibilities and every time I use it I find new ways of working with it. The paper surface I'm using is Bockingford watercolour paper and don't adjust your screens. Yes it is slightly yellow or actually this is the cream tint. It's a tinted watercolour paper so they do five different tints and it, it has something different to a watercolour paper but also it creates a lovely surface for charcoal drawing. It's, you can see it's, it's a knot surface and it has some texture, but I'm able to use those textures as part of the drawing. So let's get started. I'm, I'm going to actually be good and lean my hand on a piece of, I think you call it glassine paper or crystal paper. Um, just so I don't lean on the drawing but I'm also going to try and work this way as well so I don't end up leaning on the paper. I like to work organically but sometimes you do have to think about the medium you're using. So let's just put a bit of charcoal on. It is easier to take it off than it is to... So it's easier to add to it is to take it away but with charcoal taking away is part of the fun and I will do a little bit of that as part of the technique. Right. These ears, these are important features which distinguish a sea lion from a seal. Sea lions, there's six species, and they're found across um, I think Australia, California, and um, New Zealand. And there's out of the six, three are endangered. This is a Galapagos sea lion, endangered through humans, but also can be affected by things like the weather. So they have the El Nino and El Nina, and that can affect the breeding. So it, they either won't breed or it's, they suspend breeding. And as they don't reach maturity until they're about four or five, it can affect the sea lion population as well as fishing. But they're now protected, so hopefully their levels will increase. I don't want to put too much on because using a blender I want to blend. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And you can see how far the colour actually moves. Lightly blending, pushing the charcoal around depending on the finish you want. You may want to keep this very smooth finish. I'm going to mix it up with this kind of finish and a little bit more sketchy. Just, and you can see how little I put on and how much it's moving. In. I 
want a little bit of a base layer down, bits of tones. So I have this beautiful coloured image, um, but I've also created a black and white image, which it does look a little overexposed, but I've done that on purpose just so I can see key features. So I've just manipulated it on the screen in order to see features that I can't see on the colour. And I'm using black and white, so this is really helpful for tonal values as well. Here we go. Push this. So not only moving the charcoal around, I'm also reshaping, looking at areas that the shape of this head needs just reshaping a little bit. Okay, it's quite dark here. Push it out that way. Here, not a lot on. Like I say, it's much easier to put more on than it is to take it off. So I'm being a little bit more considered. Okay, now for a little bit more. Definitely a bit darker under here. Um, down the nose, nose is quite dark. Uh, so they have this kind of dog-like appearance. I think they're often likened to a Labrador or that kind of dog. And the female will nurture the pup up to three years. So they will stay with their mother, even though they're grown, they still like to keep learning from their mother. And it is predominantly the mother because the one ball with about five to 15 females Adding some a bit darker. Dark. Pushing the dark from where the nose is, pushing it up, but the light is hitting the top of the head, so I don't want that too dark. It's really nice what you do is you kind of feel your, your way around with this blending technique. You put the charcoal on and you move it around. Kind of, I liken it to when you're doing sculpture and you kind of feel with your hands. This is very similar, you're kind of feeling the shape. Maybe that's just me, but really does kind of have a feel. So under here is darker. Let's just put some on. I want it a little darker, so I put a little bit more on. That's quite dark. And you can see how just putting the charcoal on neat is when you get your darkest areas. And this is why I'm going to keep that really lovely, sketchy feel. The eyes are the darkest. So it's going to be a mix of blended areas, lifted out areas, and I'll show you some lifting out, and some much more sketchy lines. Just to show you the whole range of what a charcoal can do. 
More wrinkles because this is a, a young sea lion, so it needs to put on weight in order to survive, which she gets from his mother with a really high f fat content milk. Now these Galapagos sea lions have learnt how to adapt to their environment. So the Galapagos Islands, an amazing array of islands with unique, because of their position, I think they're 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador, which I think is the nearest coast, um, they have unique adapted creatures so on different islands the tortoises have different heads um, necks so depending on their food source some of the tortoises have shorter necks than other ones which need longer necks in order to reach the higher leaves and it just varies from each different island and I think that's really fascinating how creatures adapt through evolution okay, using this. So that's gone quite dark, but I'm not worried about that. I just want to build up. It's dark here. So this is the flipper. And apparently they have this leather hard flipper. Their soft, dense fur does go down into the top part of the flipper here, but the rest of the flipper is hard leather. And they have this swept back look because the first um, digit on the flipper is long and then it goes round like that. Quite clumsy on land, they look quite clumsy on land with this classic upright stance but in the water they're able to move with real grace. That was difficult. Black charcoal on a black surface. Um, quite a bit on here because that's darkest. Right, let's have a look. You can see how I'm actually using the texture of the paper because like I say these do have some quite dense fur and I want to suggest a fur like quality using the tip you can see these much more sketchy lines. While I'm looking at this, let's go back in. So Tombow razor, really useful little razor, means I can come back. And the great thing about charcoal is you can use it and lift it out. Again, using this tool as a tool rather than an eraser as such. 
I do find sometimes an eraser holds people back <sighs> because if you've got an eraser in your hand, you put something on, you rub it out, you put something on, you rub it out. But it is also a useful tool. So go around the eye here. I need the eye a bit bigger. I've been a bit. There. Use the razor just to. light at the top here where I've gone. Definitely cross the nose. Now I, I can see the fabulous whiskers this sea line already has. And in order to get some of that light whisker effect, I'm going to have to darken. Right. I have these fabulous whiskers that go around. The mouth. Let's put some darker ones on. If you've got any questions, just shout out. Hopefully we'll be able to answer some. Right here, light is catching, so let's take back and again over the... I am being careful not to brush my hand over this. It's very tempting to do so. But what I'll do is I will smudge, a big smudge across. So what I'll ha probably have to do is I will do this, get the effect I'm happy with. I need to reshape this nose actually. I'm just looking at the original. It actually comes in there. How easy that is. You can just reshape better. That nose is less rounded. Oh, that's much better. Um, you can just reshape. Darken. Like those marks. I'm going to keep those. Keep that down. Down. This is quite dark. Right, let's go on to this flipper, which goes up there, comes around, and it's got some wrinkles. Folds, not wrinkles, folds. And actually the whole arm comes up there on two. Light and I think actually this would work better. It's better. If I want it to clean it, I go like that. Okay, don't like that so much. I need a bit of lightening. And the reason why I'm concentrating and working my way down is because I don't want to keep leaning on areas. You can see that needs to. It's better. Much happier with that. And again, around the eye, I haven't quite finished doing that because I 
I got distracted by something else. I need to just just keep reevaluating shapes. And where the ears fit onto the body. Right, let's go down. It comes in there. So flipper. It's quite long. Bottom's going to be darker, so let's put the darkest area, which I can push up. Kind of goes up there, and then oh no, I know where I've gone wrong. I was just about to say. I thought, should I say? No, I can see it. Goes there. And it goes over that way. It is actually quite that long. That's where I'm going. Done. Fixed it. Keep looking at the original. Don't draw what you think you see. But it's not a problem. I can... Go back in. So let's just do this. And remind myself where I'm going on there. Right, so actually that, ignore all that, this is the arm, this it goes in there, okay, sorted, and with my blender, kind of light triangle shape it goes over because it's on the I think it's in the sand so it actually is on a ridge but it, it works later when I put on the um, a little bit of background or something that grounds it. Still a bit. Right, just darken under here. Goes round. My razor is here, so I can fix that. Okay. So let's blend. it to its edge so I can get the full you may find you kind of keep going in and out with your toning so you put it on you take it off it's all a bit of a finding out when you're ready when you've finished when you've got it just how you want it but the beauty about this is you can do that Look at the shape here before I go too far this way. That kind of comes around there, around there. And actually, this is all part of some wrinkles, folds. Sorry, not wrinkles. We don't call them wrinkles, we call them folds. Some of the very darkest areas I'm not going to put on until the very end. Just, just highlight that edge. Right. 
and get some charcoal on here just so I have a little bit more colour. I want a little bit more tonal value than I've got. Where's it gone? There you go. Pat tablecloth was a, not a good idea. I've got more pieces, okay. they're just not on view. <laughs> I know me, I would have lost it. Maybe they um, are on view, but they're just on the back table. Yeah. Right. Nice big fold there. It's darker into there. Creating that curve on these arms, because they are arms before they go into the flipper. gently because I don't want to blend it away. You have to vary your pressure as well. Like I say, the very dark tones won't happen until the very end because it's so easy to get a little bit more excited and blend them away. So blending negative Drawing, so creating the darker areas, leaving the lighter areas. This is going to be fun along here actually, because you can see some of the folds of the fur, but also the textures of the fur as well. Little ripples, and again, this is dark, and there's dark, and this there. This is very dark. This is the flipper comes up there, around there. If I make it dark, we'll make this flipper stick out. So keep moving round. It needs to be darker there because I want to push this flipper forward. You can see how it's really nice and enjoyable to actually manipulate the pastel, put it on, take it off. So you know when you've got faffing, you can actually faff a little bit with this. Depends how much time you have. Right. Yeah. Quite like that lightness, and I know it's not on the original light here, but I might add a little bit more light because I'm quite liking this tonal value. So I want it to match in other areas. So take this back. Use this as a sketching tool. Again, let's put it somewhere I can find it, right? Blender. And let's work on this. Create those lovely textures.
to just skip it on the surface. So you've got different techniques here, you can really smooth it. Or you can actually use your blender to create much more textured marks. Dark. Right, comes down here. You've got a little tail, just a little tail there, and then that goes around here, and another flipper. Is pushing out there. So this is very dark. It looks like it's the bottom of these back flippers. And then you, again, looking at the folds. I'm going to work on the darker area first. The reason being, it means I will have some charcoal on my blender, which means I can use that. Following the shapes, so it's quite rounded. out these I don't know what you call them fingers on the flippers quite light on the back so use that Google says we refer to them as digits not fingers digits well I didn't think fingers was right but it's the only thing I could think of so digits right that's quite nice and dark let's come back in really darken this back here which will make the flipper stand out and using the edge to create texture as well quite like that I might leave that kind of texture Let's shape the back Bring it round again here. It's going to be dark where this little tail is under here. I'm just also being conscious of where possibly the light could be catching because. The Galapagos are very bright, so it would definitely be catching the light. Right, again, let's put some charcoal on, let's just shake it, because it isn't just as oval and flat as I have it there. comes out a little bit more. Let's 
definitely need a bit more shaping. So darker there. That will push this. Flip her forward. Right, darkest. I does it nose Okay. And I, this, these are the areas I'm not going to blend. I'm going to actually keep that little bit of a sketchy feel. Push it a lot harder now. I don't think my eyes are big enough still. Let's go for the big baby eyes. There we go, that's better. All right, that's kind of given that a little bit more. I like that, I like that lightness, so I'm not going to interfere with that. Put some Marks darken that. Darken here. Anita. Yes. Uh, Rusty's just joined. Does he ask? Hello, about, Rusty. He's asking about the paper again. The paper is Bockingford watercolor paper, and like I said, it is actually a cream colour, so it's a tinted watercolor paper, which is. Fun to paint on with watercolour, but I'm using the texture for this and the colour. You know, it's not stark white, it's, it's, it's that lovely cream colour. So it's got great uses. You've got the texture, you've also got the colour. So, yes, it's Bockingford tinted watercolour paper. Thank you for that question. Right, in with my white. Yes. White. I see I called it a white instead of an eraser because I'm trying to get away from it being an eraser. It's much they're much smoother here, so Like I say, I'm trying desperately not to rub my hands over to get away the eraser crumbles. Nice and light there. Like I say, I don't, I think it does need a little bit lightening, just on the edge. Yeah. I think that's a bit longer than I've made it. Bring it out. I think I'm nearly there. So let's ground it by giving it something to sit on. 
You can't see much in the original, but there will be. He's obviously not floating. So just use this dashing technique. That's skipping over that textured surface, which is why I chose to use this nut surface, this watercolour paper. Am I happy? Of course not. I can always do something more, but you have to tell yourself when. To stop. This shape is just bothering me a little bit. I think it goes up a little bit more there. That's better. He's less more of a less of a slope now. It's definitely much more defined. Clean the edges, and then I'm done. And I'm cleaning the edges, I can also still. Great shape. <sighs> That's neat. A bit more shadow. I don't think I need much more there and just Finish off some edges. <sighs> Still a little bit fluffy, so. Got enough whiskers. Do I need a highlight? You, you, you got to be careful about putting highlights in because obviously he's looking this way, and I think the light is hitting him from behind. Therefore, his eyes won't have a direct hit of light but you don't want them to look dead and dull. No, I'm going to stop now. So tempted to brush away with my hand, but I'm not going to. When you pick it up, tap it, because I know what will happen. It will just smear. And I know if I walk away and come back in half an hour, there'll be areas I want to work on. But I hope you enjoyed that. Just, I've lost it again. One tip, don't have a black um, cloth on you drawing surface, because you keep losing your charcoal. Um, really beautiful, and there's so much more you can learn. That you can make big sways, lots of texture, with a really simple drawing tool. Now, I'm just going to finish by, how do I fix this? Now, you can put a spray fixative on. I personally don't. The reason being, I find it tends to dull. Now, I've known people between layers fix and then on the final layer not fix at all because they want this charcoal finish. But for me, I prefer not to finish at all. And what I'm going to do is the same, use the crystal paper. This is a crystal paper I would lean on um, not to smudge the surface, but use a big piece and I don't even put clips, I literally fold it around and tape on the back. And that will stack and store however you want it until you decide whether you want it framing or you can, if you're sending it to someone. And that is the way I tend to finish a charcoal drawing um, without using a fixative. So I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another demonstration.